Hello, today we will talk about uh, what it means to be an AI ML product manager. My name is Sai Bandaro. I am a product manager with Microsoft. Uh, my role in Microsoft is um, in the Azure Identity team. Uh, I work with uh, developing uh, the identity capability uh, that Microsoft offers. Uh, it has several components like multi-factor access, user single sign-on to application, and various other features, and relies very heavily on um, the uh, you know latest technology. Um, in terms of my background, uh, I started my career as a software engineer with IBM, uh, and then I spent uh, several years in uh, management and security consulting, worked with companies like Deloitte and DY, and finally made my transition as a product manager um, recently. So I, as a PM, I worked with Facebook, and now I'm working with Microsoft. Um, before Microsoft, um, or even like starting my career, uh, I uh, did my bachelor's in computer science. Um, later on, I came to the US and I uh, did my master's degree in technology management. So I kind of was able to get a mix of both um, engineering and uh, management um, in, in my education. So today, uh, in terms of the agenda, uh, I plan to cover four big topics. The first one being a uh, general uh, primer on uh, what uh, the AI ML industry looks like. Um, and then the second uh, piece of the agenda focuses on the product manager role and how the team structure um, is a sl slightly a little bit different when we are talking of AI ML products uh, than your typical product team. Uh, and finally, we'll talk about some responsible AI uh, features. Um, really, when we are developing products and we are trying to automate things, uh, there's, there's a lot of considerations that we need to make. Um, in terms of being responsible and fair and uh, you know not uh, creating problems. So um, starting with uh, you know where is uh, AI and ML used? It's pretty much used everywhere. Um, and it, today's world it touches many aspects of our life. Um, Netflix uh, you know looks at your past, past history. Uh, of uh, what you watched, uh, what you liked, maybe your watch list, and then it recommends uh, movies for you to watch next. And maybe if you click on it and you like it, it you know learns from it and it would recommend more such movies for you. Um, similarly, Facebook focuses its ads, uh, and we all know there's a lot of machine learning involved there. Google has several products that use machine learning. For example, YouTube uses um, it for recommendations. There is Google Translate, which is used for natural language processing. Um, Tesla is using uh, artificial intelligence for uh, cars. You can you know, use it for the autopilot mode. Uh, and and you know, the cars are, to some degree, able to self-drive themselves. Uh, besides that, there's even like government agencies like IRS, which are trying to use uh, AI to detect fraud and you know find people uh, who are trying to do the wrong things. Um, there's also AI everywhere in uh, video games. Minecraft is one. There's like you know virtually every video game has an AI component in it. It also has you know several applications in like healthcare, research, and, and you name it. Um, so before we start, I wanted to quickly level set on a few important terms when we are speaking of artificial intelligence and machine learning. The first one is, uh, you know, what do we mean by artificial intelligence? So it's really uh, a larger discipline where uh, we talk about intelligence demonstrated by machines. Uh, you know, when we speak intelligence, we typically think of human beings or you know animals um, you know, using their natural intelligence. But this is more about 
systems and you know how they learn and how they uh, you know produce results uh, that are sometimes useful to us then second terminology i want to talk about is intelligent agents this is nothing but essentially any system that can kind of look at its environment uh, perceive that environment learn from it and take actions uh, that would you know essentially maximize the goal of that uh, agent one very simple e example is a thermostat uh, you know we wouldn't really think about it being uh, a, a intelligent system but it is um, it, it 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 really looks at the ambient temperature and uh, based on it being high or low it can automatically adjust and uh, make sure you know your house is uh, warm or cold as you like it and the final term i want to talk about is machine learning uh, machine learning is simply a subset of artificial intelligence uh, the goal of machine learning is uh, very specific that is to look into past data uh, train or learn from it and then produce some outcomes uh, that are meaningful to us so it is kind of helps us accomplish artificial intelligence but it is only like a subset of uh, ai uh, most of my presentation will be focused on how we can use machine learning in uh, in intelligent products and uh, what the pm role will look like so coming to machine learning uh, you know there are very few uh, simple concepts that we need to know uh, it all starts with data. Um, if you know, that's why it's very important. Um, it's kind of the cornerstone for um, you know training models or you know for for systems to learn. Uh, so having like good data, good labeling is really important. Um, and then you know the data is fed into something called a model. Model is nothing but uh, uh, an algorithm. Uh, there are several different, you know, statistical algorithms, predictive algorithms that can kind of predict an outcome based on the data you feed and things that you tell it are important. Um, you know, for example, if you are thinking of Netflix recommendations, um, you could have a, a algorithm that can do some sort of <clears throat> um, analysis on past data and you could tell it that uh, you know, maybe things like what the person has, you know, uh, person's like past watch history, uh, maybe their watch list, uh, things that they probably, you know, um, hovered over uh, long enough as things that would be relevant, uh, you know, or important um, factors to account. And the model would like take that into account um, and produce some results uh with with probably some sort of a probability assigned to it uh which says you know the likelihood of um someone liking a certain movie or a series um and then the final step is really validation okay now we produce this result but we really don't know whether it is uh, uh you know relevant to the person or not you know it was a good recommendation or not how can we learn from it uh, so that's where we talk about uh, validation and a feedback loop. So essentially, if the person actually looks at that recommendation, clicks on it and watches the entire movie, that is a positive validation that the model worked. Uh, on the other hand, if the person dismissed that recommendation or said don't recommend movies like that, it is you know essentially a negative validation. So the model will learn from it and improve and hopefully show um, better uh, recommendations. Similarly, you can apply the same, uh, you know, data uh, and model-based approach to solving other problems. For example, uh, this is used a lot in identity fraud analytics uh, in many products like Google Sign in Microsoft um, identity as well. So essentially, you can look into like users sign in data, for example, what places they are signing in from, the browser they are signing in from, and several other factors. And then the model can, you know, uh, use those factors and, uh, you know, predict a probability on whether that sign in attempt is valid or not. And um, if, if it suspects something, uh, for example, if I signed in two hours ago in US and then 
uh, two hours later, I'm signing in someone from Australia. That is going to be a red flag. So then it has to do some sort of a step up or validation uh, before allowing that person access. So essentially, it's kind of, you know, you can see the same working model. Next, we'll talk about how your role of as a PM will be structured. Uh, the focus of a PM is still on the primary goals, uh, which is basically improving the product, right? You will still be defining metrics, uh, strive for a better user experience, uh, you know, be, be that customer voice, help with prioritization, uh, you know, unlocking like new value within your product. So all of those fundamentals uh, of the PM role are same. Uh, what is different is you need to be um, uh, a little more conversant um, in how machine learning works because you need to work with a lot of people who made these products happen. Uh, and some basics are like kind of looking into the types of machine learning algorithms. There are various regression based algorithms um, like K and then K-means clustering and you know all such. So kind of understanding uh, the various machine learning algorithms, at least like the top five, uh, uh, you know, the commonly used ones and their trade-offs. Uh, learning about sort of, you know, supervised and unsupervised machine learning, how you can train models um, would be great as well. And finally, you know, it's like a weekend activity. You can, you know, go and practice at Kaggle.com. It provides so many tutorials. So you can probably spin up a, a quick project and, you know, play around with it. That, that would really give you the confidence um, to, to do better at your role. The next section is around how AI ML teams are. Um, if we are talking about a typical product team, you would have your uh, product manager at the center and your main counterparts are going to be from the engineering, uh, probably five to 10 engineers to one product manager is like, you know, a, a, a common ratio we see in the industry. And besides that, there are like other supporting functions like documentation, design, legal, marketing. Um, now coming to an AI ML product team uh, along with in your engineers uh, who build stuff. Uh, you also have a team of data scientists uh, and the split of you know, your counterparts is going to slightly differ because a lot of your time kind of work go also goes into working with the data scientists in improving the models. Uh, you will probably not work as much uh, with the engineers. It's going to be a, a, you know, a, an even split more or less and rest of the other uh, supporting functions are going to be the same. The next section I want to talk about is responsible AI. So previously, initially we talked about how AI has so many applications, right? Like self-driving calls, recommendations, engines, and all of that. Um, with all that, there's also a fundamental uh, aspect of responsibility that we need to uh, think about as PMs. Um, for example, a lot of the times the same PM business goals like user retention or user engagement, increasing revenue, often have some undesirable consequences. Uh, for example, if you're a social media platform and if user retention um, and engagement is your uh, primary goal, uh, you would probably create content that you know uh, engages them, whether it is uh bad or good maybe you know keep throwing some more extreme content at them and you know sort of end up in a polarized um uh, demographics um somewhat so there's all these unintended consequences you can have or if you're developing a game and if your main goal is user engagement but then if the game is so addictive that people are not leaving their homes um it's it's pretty bad as well you know it's not in the best interest of our customers we are promoting unhealthy behaviors and um, a generally unhealthy world um, some undesirable consequences to be aware of are like bias um, if a lot of the time uh, you know your training data is uh, biased towards a certain group of people maybe you know the 
the outcomes of the machine learning will also have some bias as well. Uh, polarization, we also talked about that, uh, which is you know a problem in the social media. Uh, privacy infringement. Um, you know, there are limits on what AI uh, should know and learn from. Uh, for example, it is not okay for you to, you know, infringe on people's health data and then make, uh, you know, recommendations out of it. Uh, psychological issues is a big problem. Uh, there's several social media sites that have undesirable effects on teenagers and uh, people having problems with their body image and such. Uh, and finally, addiction that's, uh, you know, that's there in social media or even like video games um, and a lot of other products. So it's important to define a framework and, you know, hold uh, yourself and your product team accountable to that. Uh, this is one sample framework, but you can definitely define what works for you and what you think is important. But a few aspects that I want to highlight here are one, your product should be, uh, or your machine learning outcomes should be interpretable. Uh, for example, uh, you know, again, coming back to the social media example that I given before, if sometimes like I think of something in my mind and somehow that shows up on my newsfeed. And I'm like wondering how did that happen? right it, it's, it doesn't offer any explanation other than uh, you know creeping me out so that's that's one like good example uh, the outcomes of machine learning uh, you know in your product should be interpretable viewer should be able to connect how they got those recommendations even if it is not directly obvious maybe you should tell them how you derived a conclusion if you are recommending them something um, or you know asking them to do something Second thing is uh, fairness. Uh, you want to make sure you are able to train your data uh, with uh, appropriate representation from everywhere. Uh, there could be problems with bias uh, in, in your outcomes. Um, the next big aspect is safety, um, which kind of goes with the polarization consequence I talked about, uh, you know, if or, or even, sort of people feeling, you know, bad about their body image or, you know, driving people into uh, suicidal thoughts or even sort of compromising someone's location uh, to, uh, you know, uh, a potentially bad actor uh, and, you know, compromising safety of a person. So, and you, you can think of it in any way, right? If you are thinking of a self-driving car, it could be you know, potentially making sure the experience is accident-free and you need to be really, really sure uh, when you're um, trusting a car to drive itself. Uh, the next big aspect is being compliant. Um, so GDPR, uh, the European Commission has drafted a lot of uh, uh, legislation around um, how companies should use and protect uh, user data. So it's good to be aware of those uh, applicable regulations. Even if it is not applicable, it is good to kind of uh, build your products so that you know they they are built according to like good practices and frameworks that are already recognized and in use then we uh, don't want our products to be addictive. A uh, lot of the times you could have some uh, interrupts so that people take a break and you know, they're not hooked onto your product forever. Um, and final one is obviously privacy. Uh, we want to make sure people's health data or personal information is protected. It is not compromised and not used uh, other than in an authorized way. Uh, and people know how their data is being used. You, if you are interested in uh, more responsible AI frameworks, you can look into uh, the framework from European Commission. Uh, Microsoft has a nice one as well. Uh, Google has published a pretty detailed one. So I provided links here. Uh, feel free to take a look. So to summarize, uh, 
kind of have three main points or takeaways. Uh, one is uh, it's always good to have uh, some understanding of how machine learning works so that you're conversant uh, and much more effective in your role as a product manager of uh, uh, an AI product. Um, so definitely try out tools like Kaggle.com and you know learn a bit. You don't need to be an expert or a data scientist, uh, but it's always good if you know it. A lot of the time, this is also a good entry point uh, in general. Like if you're already a data scientist or if you know, uh, you know very well about machine learning, uh, you can, you know, and if you are looking to transition into product management, uh, AI ML products are like a good pathway for that. Uh, the second takeaway is uh, to understand the differences in how the product team is structured uh, and how the product life cycle is also different than a typical product, right? With AI ML, it's, uh, there's a lot more experimentation. There's a lot more uh, involvement of a data scientist. Um, and, and that role becomes much more important. Uh, and, and that's like a important contact part uh, of the product manager. And finally, please do incorporate uh, responsible AI into your product. Make sure you have a framework if your company has a defined one. Uh, and it's always helpful uh, to create better products. Make sure users trust your products and uh, you know, you're creating a better world in general. Uh, it was great. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak.